going to talk about a book of life. Revelation 3, 5 is where we're going to start. But the church should know there's a book of life. And as we'll see as we go along, it's also referred to as the Lamb's book of life. Singular. Now, the best way I can describe the Lamb's or the book of life is I have a copy right here of the book of life. It's called the Bible. For those of you that have a Bible, that's your copy of the book of life. The difference between my book of life and the Lamb's book of life is that he has a heavenly register with the names written of those who are in that book of life, those that are saved, those that are walking with him today that are walking in the spirit. And this is what we want to talk about is keeping your name written in this book of life, because as you're going to find out, well, let's start in verse five here, Revelation 3, 5. He that overcomes the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now, folks, as long as, you know, and, and people quote John 10, 27 a lot, when they get into eternal securities, and they talk about, well, I'll read it for you here, John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Now that's verse 28. I give unto them eternal life. But verse 27 has to be in play. My sheep hear my voice. You have to hear his voice on a daily basis. And my suggestion to you is make sure that your name is in that book of life today. Because they, the Bible says they that are in the flesh cannot please God. At any point in time in your walk with the Lord, you can revert back to the flesh. You may get caught up in something carnal. You may get duped by a carnal doctrine. Many people fall away, and the Bible is very specific in 2 Timothy 4.1. says, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. They'll depart from the faith. You can't depart from something unless you were actually there. I know folk, well, once you get to salvation, you can never lose it. You, the devil's going to do everything he can to talk you out of it or talk you into some cheap knockoff imitation of the truth. That's why we have so many denominations. But in order to stay with the Lord, which you can, by the way, you know, people talk, am I saying there's no such thing as it's eternal security? You can't. You can't as long as you stay in the realm of the spirit. As long as you walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh, or as that word in Revelation 3, 5 talks about, you're not overcome. Overcome by what? Well, let's look at 2 Peter 2. You know, this, this ledger has the Lord's pen that he writes, has, has, a, has a pen that he can write it with, but it also has an eraser. The word blot means to erase, to blot out, to smear. That isn't something that you don't want to find out someday that, hey, wait a minute, I don't have your name here. It's not current. What happened? Second Peter 2, and I'm going to start at verse 18. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh to much wantonness. Those that are, were clean escape from them will live in error. This sounds like a lot of our so-called apostles, prophets, evangelists today that you hear, you know, they, they, they tell wild stories to try to, excuse me, build up their organization or kingdom. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome and the same as he brought into bondage. Well, you're either an overcomer or you're being overcome by the things of the flesh. And if you are, then you're in bondage. You shall know the truth. The truth shall set you free. Sometimes you don't know enough of the truth to set you free. You haven't continued in the faith grounded and settled. For if after they escaped the pollutions of the world to the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they're again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. It would, for it would have been better not, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. And after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Does that sound like some somebody that's still walking with the Lord? Absolutely not. 
Remember, he talked about the stumbling stone. He says, if you offend one of my little ones, it were better that a, 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 this uh, millstone, which weighed about a ton, was cast around your neck, thrown into the sea. The sea is not a heavenly reward. In fact, we'll talk about the sea later, and you'll find out what the sea involves. Well, let's go to Revelation. And we'll stay in Revelation. And... Uh, I believe we're in 19. Yeah, Revelation 20, excuse me. And I'm at verse 11. I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the heaven and earth fled away, and there was no place found for, for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So there's more. So there's the book of life. And then when you start getting into man's works and man's religions, man's doctrines, that's not the book of life. That's another book that man wrote. Man, you know, when you think of things like Catholicism and uh, I mean, you can go name any denomination. But where does the Lord say that he was Catholic or? Protestant or Lutheran or Mormon, Muslim. Where does he say that? He doesn't say that. So those are the books that man came up with and judged according to their works. At some point in time, they departed from the faith. They were no longer giving heed to the voice of God, rather to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. And at some point, their name gets blotted out of the book of life. Because if you go to Matthew 7, 21 through 23, you have all these people going, well, we prophesied in your name and we've done many wonderful works. At some point in time, they may have begun in the spirit, but they thought they could perfect it in the flesh. They thought they had ideas of how salvation should work, which again comes under the titles of denominations. Or they just added their little spin and twist to it. You know, and a lot of times it has to do with money. Trying to get the money out of the people. They make merchandise of the people. Because God's not their source. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. So they, there's their works. The difference between what the Lord... You see, the Lord has a path for you to follow. The Lord wants a relationship. Salvation is a commitment. It's a relationship. Salvation is something you need to follow through with. That's just the beginning. You know, people, well, oh, wonderful, they made a commitment at the altar. And then two, two weeks later, they're sitting there, you know, drinking or shooting something into their body or, or whatever lust of the flesh they fell for. Well, you can't continue in that lifestyle. You have to break free from that stuff. We talked about, the last couple studies, about alternative, alternative lifestyles. Some people think, that they were made a different way. Some people think, well, I'm a male, I should be a female, or vice versa. Or they think that they're in love, the man thinks he's in love with another man, or a woman with a woman, and that doesn't float. That doesn't, it's not going to float to God's kingdom. That's not going to get you in there. That's under the category of books and their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. That's the spiritual death, which separates you from the Lord forever. That's spiritual death. That's the one you don't want to be a part of. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's why the book of uh, Hebrews talks about in Hebrews 10.7. I want to say it's Hebrews 10.7. I do have a note written down here. It says, Lo, I come in the volume of a book. Psalm 40 verse 7 says the same thing. I come in the volume of a book to do thy will. Singular. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You were given everything needed to make it from the beginning of your walk to the end. The Bible says, he that endures to the end shall be saved. Shall be saved. Yeah, you can be walking with the Lord, but at some point in time, you can walk away. Sometimes you don't even know it. Or sometimes you do, and you choose something in the flesh that you thought was better than what the Lord had to offer in the spirit. That's what sin is. It's unbelief. And many people, many, 
begin in the spirit and think they can perfect it by the flesh. The sea, many times, and that's what it says in verse 13, the sea gave up the dead. Many times people, the masses are referred to as a sea. You can go back to uh, Revelation 17, 15 here as well. And it talks about those that make, in verse 14, these these are the, and there's people that will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of Lords, King of Kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which you saw where the horse sit are peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and tongues. So the waters, it refers to the masses. Remember in James 1, he talked about those that are double minded, are unstable like the wave of the sea driven with, with the wind and toss. You're seeing the masses today, and, and the Bible talks about perilous times. I see so many people swayed with false doctrines. Just like the wind's blowing, so they go with the wind, like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. And that's James 1, 6. And then he goes on to say, The double-minded man is unstable in all his ways and shall not receive anything from the Lord. Well, if you're not receiving your instructions for the Lord, then there's only one other source. Now, he uses the term he called, you know, where, he's the, where the whore sits. Well, James also made reference to those adulterers and adulteresses. Know you not that friendship with the world is enmity with God? That's what I see out there. There's a lot of doctrines that are friendly. They're just, they're like the world. They just throw a few scriptures in there. These churches are a lot like the Walmart mentality. They do anything they can to sell a product, to get the people to come in, a gimmick, whatever it takes to get them in the door, and then sell them some cheap, inferior, knockoff product. I, I don't want to say everything Walmart sells is cheap and inferior, but there are places and things that, that will try to entice you with something that's not legit. And the so-called church today is like that. You go into these places, they promise them liberty. But many times the preachers themselves are the servants of corruption. Their names are not written in the book of life because they don't know what the book of life says. And you not only need to know what this book says, which many people do, you got to know what it means. You have to know the mystery of the gospel to see beyond the veil of the flesh. These people are stuck behind the veil of the flesh. In order to break free, they're able to break free, which veil is done away in Christ. 2 Corinthians 3 talks about that. You need Christ and that revelation to understand how to go beyond the veil of the flesh and operate in the realm of the spirit. Revelation 13. And it, verse 7, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given unto him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And this was, this was uh, the false prophet coming against uh, or this was the beast coming against the two witnesses. And they that dwell upon earth shall worship those whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man has ears to hear, let him hear. So if your name's not written in the book of life, you're going to fall for anything. And that's why your name isn't written. It's blotted out. It's erased. The Lord, sad to say, folks, and the reality is, he does blot out names. He can write them in there. When you accept the Lord, your name's written. That's wonderful. But it can also be erased in, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. You made a decision to walk in the kingdom. You can walk out. Every day that you get up, you have a choice what you're going to do. Are you going to walk in the spirit? Or are you going to allow the flesh to overcome the Lord and his desire in your life? Which one's going to win out? Choose you this day. Why not find out what's in the book of life? He said, I come in the volume of a book. All this scripture I provided is for your benefit. 2 Peter 1.20, 21 talks about no scripture is of any private interpretation. Well, we can close on that one. 2 Peter 1, verse 20. And I'll, I'll actually start verse 19. For we also have a more sure word of prophecy, wherein you do well to take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place, until the day dawn and day star arise in your hearts, knowing this, that no scriptures of any, no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation. 
For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of God spoke or spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So folks, if it's a doctrine that's not ordained of God, if it's not something you heard from the Holy Ghost, then it came from another source. Most likely man, which came from, you know, the devil himself planting a seed, a false doctrine. It talks about the terrors that are planted. It talks about many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. When you're deceived, you're taken out of the book of life. Folks, it can happen. The Bible tells you that. So I know there's a lot of goody two-shoe people that don't like to rub people the wrong way or don't want to say anything or, oh, well, my dad or my brother or somebody made a commitment and he's the nicest guy and now he can do whatever. No, no. Nice guys are going to finish back behind me in line. There's a balance. you got to know, too, that the Lord had a balance in his life. As much as he loved Peter and prayed for him, there's also a point where he looked at Peter and said, Get thee behind me, Satan, because this doctrine you're talking right now is not of God. He had, There was a time his parents were trying to find him and his family, and he said, and they were, it's interesting how it's worded, they were on the outside of the temple. And the Lord made specific, who are my mother and my brethren? Say that do the will of God. This is my family, those that are in Christ. So church, stay written in that Lamb's Book of Life. God bless.